University Collaborative on Community Inclusion. Um, I am Gretchen Sneven. I will be, you'll be hearing me throughout this presentation just for some logistics as we're going through this. Um, whoops. We will, um, this is sort of the technical information. Um, we're hoping that you'll want to engage with us throughout this. You can do that in a couple of ways. You're welcome to join us um, when you see these little red squares with the what look like speech bubbles in there. Um, go, that's going to be times where we want you to join in and, and talk with us. Um, you can raise your hand, um, which if you see the top of the screen, and it, and it says, and you hover on it, it will um, give you the opportunity to pull the chat and the participants boxes down. That's gonna be the way that you can interact with Katie um, or myself. So you can type into the chat box. I just sent you all a message that says hello, um, and that should prompt you to pull that down. Um, that will be an easy way if, you, if you're uncomfortable talking um, out loud on this, this webinar, you're welcome to type your comments or questions in that box and um, share it with all participants and we'll be happy to read those comments as we're going through. Uh, if you would like to talk with us, um, you can raise your hand um, and Katie, who is uh, was kind enough to help us host this event, uh, will unmute you so you can join in the conversation. Um, you can also unmute yourself, but if it seems like it's going to be a a free for all of conversation. Um, we'll try to organize it so that we're un so that we can unmute you as well. Um, if you are on Twitter and you'd like to participate that way, also you can tweet us using at tu collab and the hashtag collab move sixteen. Uh, Paige O'Sullivan, who is our lovely uh, Twitter extraordinaire uh, is going to be live tweeting throughout this um, presentation as well. So um, we're really excited. This is the first time we've done one of these types of presentations and we're really hoping that um, you guys are excited to be here and are excited to join us. So with that being said, let's get moving. All right, so to start out, I just wanted to give a little bit of an orientation as to why we wanted to have this conversation, why we're focusing on physical activity, particularly for individuals with mental health conditions. And some of the information that we know is that people who are diagnosed with mental illnesses experience higher rates of sedentary activity and are less likely than the general population to meet the physical activity guidelines. Why do we care about this? Um, it's because that this contributes to obesity and poor physical health. So we know that obesity is, is experienced at rates as higher as 1.2 to 3.5 times more among individuals who are diagnosed with a mental illness. Um, and this is associated with higher rates of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and other conditions that really contribute to poor physical health. Um, and it's also associated with the statistic that says that some people who are people who are diagnosed with mental health conditions um, have a life expectancy that's up to 30 years less than the general population. So this is something that's really interesting um, and really something that we need to focus on because not only do we care about mental health, but we also care about the, the physical health of people um, who experience mental health conditions. Uh, and we know that beyond the physical health connection to physical activity, uh, physical inactivity is also associated with poor mental health scores um, and an increased symptoms of depression. And there's, there's newer research that's coming out as well that really talks about the relationship between cognition, memory, and physical activity. So why are you here? We have a couple of different things that we're going to go throughout this presentation. Um, we did a survey before, um, both for some of you who may have participated in it, but also for people who weren't able to attend the webinar today. We have 38 respondents to that, 24 individuals with lived experience, 10 providers, and four agency administrators. You'll see as we're going through the presentation that we'll have some speech bubbles um, that will tell us why, um, 
or really tell get some feedback from other individuals. So just briefly, why why are you folks here? What brought you here today? It's all right if you don't want to chat yet. Um, hopefully, you'll warm up to it. Um, all right, we've got people from Baylor. Hello. We're looking at people who need to motivate themselves. That's awesome. Um, and so we're hoping that today this will be engaging for both providers and consumers. And and while we are really focused on um, focused on strategies to support consumers to engage in physical activity, this is something that can be beneficial for everyone. Katie's really excited about something. I'm not sure what, but that's okay. So one of the things that, um, that we know that exists is barriers. There are a number of barriers that individuals with mental health conditions experience in terms of physical activity. We know that there are, um, there's information that say consumers believe that there are a lack of adequate programs and also professional support to engage in physical activity. We also know that um, mental health, uh, and a symptom of mental, a lot of mental health conditions impacts motivation um, and that really desire to engage in new activities or physical activity and, and making those changes. And while we're talking about mental health, this really is something that impacts everyone. We also know that sometimes individuals uh, with lived experience live in neighborhoods where they may feel like it's unsafe to be outside and they're concerned about engaging in the community um, in their immediate area because of potentially unsafe conditions um, or because of high crime rates. We also know that the sedation or um, sedation of medication rhymes uh, it can impact physical activity and really that motivation as well. And that's a very real thing that, you know, we need to be aware of and, and talk about with consumers and also give them the voice to let them to talk to their providers about how that medication may be impacting other areas of participation. Um, again, we also know that there are sometimes negative self-perceptions. Medication also impacts um, weight gain. So we know people who take psychiatric medications also often experience a significant weight gain, which may impact their self-perception. We know that body image um, and low body image can negatively impact um, people's willingness to engage in physical activity in public environments. We also know that once you are less active, it's harder to get started because you may not feel like you have the confidence to do those things. Another thing is that there's a lack of social support. People who are socially connected are more likely to be physically active. And this makes sense because we know that people who, um, if you, if you si sign up to run with a friend and it's Friday night and you're tired and you get home and all you want to do is sit back and relax, but you're like, oh, my friend's coming to meet me and we're going to go running, you're more likely to do those things. And so having that social support can be very important. Um, and this can be people, a lack of social support to do those activities with, but also looking at social support as um, the people who support you to reach your physical activity goals. So if you are interested in, or if you're, you've set goals for yourself, who do you share that information with? Who do you share the your successes or who do you tell that you're really trying to make a change and engage in physical activity having those people that you can report to who are in your own um, natural support through your support network can be really important in trying to uh, change your own physical activity and really meet those physical activity goals and then we also know that people with lived experience have very financial um, very real financial and transportation barriers uh, that may make it difficult to engage in physical activity outside of the home. And so those are things that we also need to be aware of. What are some of the barriers that, that you experience? These were some of the barriers that we heard from the survey that we put out. Um, what, Catherine's is not a barrier. Sorry, that one got in there. Um, but for me, we have 
Karen from Appleton, Wisconsin, who said, for me right now, finances are not a barrier to physical activity. In the past, this has been the case. It's been difficult to afford a gym membership or supplies um, needed, shoes and clothing. I think helping to advocate for mental health paying for supports for physical activity would be a great step forward. As a side effect of psychiatric medications, I've gained more than 80 pounds. It was difficult to get back into physical activity because I had really poor body image and felt uncomfortable going to the gym or to a yoga class, et cetera. So there's a lot of information here. We know people have financial barriers. We know people have some of that self-confidence barriers. Um, the an, an anonymous individual from Louisiana said that, that they have little to no encouragement from their spouse and their energy level is low. They spend too much time playing games on their phone when they're depressed or they zone out too long. And so these are some of the barriers that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. From Marjorie from Pennsylvania, we hear that she was a provider. She said some of our staff have physical disabilities, which limit physical activity. It's also expensive to purchase gym and yoga memberships and classes. As a nonprofit agency, our, our limited resources cannot sustain providing pedometers, shoes, clothing, et cetera, to our consumers. Consumers desire to participate in physical activity, or consumers desire to participate in physical activity is a barrier, barrier as well, and we do our best to encourage participation. And then finally, Dan from the north side of Chicago told us that he has many barriers, probably too many to list, but he'll start with that working full time makes it difficult. Working during the prime hours of the day leaves very little energy to be utilized afterwards, I believe. I'm not a morning person, so there's that. Also, after times I feel crappy internally in, in my stomach area. I believe this is due to many factors. Um, and finally, I've not made it a habit. Experts say that it takes three weeks to form a habit. And for me, exercise is simply not one of them. So we have some really real barriers that we're hearing about. What about you guys, consumers? Are there are people with lived experiences? Are there barriers to physical activity that you experience? What are, what are others? Are there personal barriers? Are there, are there barriers within your community? Are there barriers you experience from your agency? Providers, are there, are there agency barriers that you experience um, that really prevent you from promoting physical activity? What do you observe in the individuals that you work with? We have Pat Hayes who, who's, he's looking at some tools. We'll get to those. Um, but learning the proper tools and how to do things safely, that's really important because if, if people are not, if you don't feel confident that you're able to do those things independently, um, then, you know, it's going to be difficult for you to engage in that. Uh, Tracy, I'm going to unmute you. So hopefully you'll join us and, and let us know some of the barriers that you experience. Tracy, are you there? That's all right. Um, but I do see that you you typed in that staying motivated is one of the barriers that you uh, experience. Um, funding and time to work with partners, that's definitely something. So having the, the finances to do it. Um, Brandon, who's one of our um, co-workers, he says that people he works with don't even know where to start to find the things that they might enjoy. So that knowing those resources um, is also really Im important. That I'm, I'm seeing a lot of information about confidence and, and that lack of um, having that poor body image or, or not being confident or comfortable and engaging in these new atmospheres or new activities. Great, and some physical problems associated with excess weight um, makes exercise painful um, or uncomfortable. Great, so these, that's not great, but these are great examples of barriers. And the reason that we're starting with barriers uh, is a couple, there's a couple reasons for it. First is that you have to recognize that changing your lifestyle and being more physically active isn't always easy. You know, really recognizing that uh, there are barriers that are out there and they're very real. It's not just that individuals don't want to do it or they don't want to make the time for it, but it's hard. It's hard for everyone. You know, if, if 
we all know that exercise really can be a wonder drug, but as a population, um, both individuals with mental health conditions, but also the general population, we're not engaging um, in the levels of physical activity that can really help us have some of those health benefits. And so recognizing that those barriers exist, acknowledging them, and then really trying to find out if there are strategies to navigate um, barriers, navigate these barriers, um, and, and, and start to engage in more sustainable activities. So we've talked about barriers for a little bit. Um, now we're going to talk about things that work. Um, what the research tells us is that we want to connect to and use strategies that connect to an individual's interests. And this can be on a couple of different levels. First, we want to know what motivates the individual to be physically active. Sometimes it's, it's the more obvious things like I want to lose weight or I want to feel better or I want to, to be healthier. I want to be able to walk up the stairs and not lose my breath. And those are important. And that may be the motivation that really that that promotes people to engage in physical activity. And that's fine. And recognizing it and helping people to identify what those motivations are can be really helpful um, to to starting and, and maintaining a physical activity program. But there may be other motivations as well. So, for example, some people may be motivated if they have children or grandchildren that they want to be more physically active so they can keep up with their kids or they can keep up with um, grandkids. Uh, because they're fast and they run around and if you get tired, it can be exhausting. And so their motivation may be to engage with family members or friends. Their motivation may be that they like to be outside and being outside is often um, an expectation that you need to be more physically active. Um, and so recognizing that motivation or an individual's motivation may be different than just the obvious of being more physically active or losing weight is really important because knowing that motivation can help you to support both your own engagement but also help you to better support consumers um, to continue to engage and reminding them of what that personal motivation is. The other thing that's important to remember is that exercise doesn't have to be painful, it doesn't have to be boring, and it doesn't have to be a chore. You know, you can, you can engage in exercise or physical activities that are fun. Uh, I bike. I like to hike. I like to run. Not everybody's going to like those things. Um, an example that I often give is when I, when I lived at home, I, was, um, I had my mom sign up for the gym with me, and we went all the time. But as soon as I stopped going, I moved away, my mom stopped because she didn't particularly like the gym. She liked going with me. And so her motivation was that social connection. But once I stopped going with her, she had to find something else that she was able to continue to do and something that she enjoyed on her own. The other thing that research tells us is that having a diversity of activities that promotes physical activity is going to be beneficial. So it's not just doing one thing consistently that to engage in physical activity, but thinking about diverse strategies to, to increase physical activity going for walks, riding bikes, um, dancing with your friends, going to yoga, doing multiple activities can really help you decrease burnout um, and can also help you vary your, your activity plan and it starts to become something that is more consistent and more sustainable. Uh, the other thing is really connecting to those social individuals. So connecting and sharing your goals with others um, will help you increase your own accountability um, it also encourages you when people ask you what you're engaging in. And then finding those activities that you can do with others because it's often more fun to do things together and you're more likely to follow through because that person may call you and show up and, and you know they're going to be at the gym at a certain time, so that may be the motivation to get, um, get you through. The other thing to consider when you're planning your own activities or when you're supporting individuals to engage in physical activity is to, to really recognize what those barriers are. Um, and then also plan activities that have the least amount of barriers. So if transportation is a very real and, and uh, real barrier that seems insurmountable, don't plan activities that require a lot of transportation to get there. Think about things that you can do in your own community or things that you can do outside of your house. Um, because that's going to be something, if the barrier to transportation, if there's no way to get around it, 
then you can't set activities that, that force you to get through that barrier. Um, or if you're working with an individual or planning your own activities and you start to identify all of these barriers that exist, you may find that that's actually not an activity that you're interested in because it's, you're starting to just make a lot of excuses as to why it's not going to work. So pick something else and that's fine. And the other thing is that a lot of times when we think about physical activity, we think about high end energy expenditure. We think about the gym. We think about exercise. We think about running. We think about things that make us sweat and make our heart beat really fast. But there are other ways that we can be physically active. Going outside, walking, those are things that are, may not be that high-end energy expenditure, but they're also really important because there's a lot of research right now that's looking specifically at the health impacts of sedentary behavior. The health, I'm sorry, there's a siren. Um, the health impacts of sedentary behavior and how it can be um, equally or more so detrimental than just um, meeting the physical activity guidelines. So if you're meeting the physical activity guidelines, you're exercising 30 minutes a day, but then you're spending the rest of your time sitting, that's going to have a detrimental impact on your health. So we're looking for ways to incorporate light activity and really intentionally reduce sedentary time um, is beneficial. So when we talked with, or when we got our responses from um, the consumers and the providers that were engaged in um, our survey, these are some of the responses that we got. And I, and I love that some of these, are, they're, very, um, they're very honest. I struggle with this. I do track my steps and I'm gradually in, increasing my reach um, to 10,000 a day. Currently my goal is 6,000. I make it five to seven days. Um, when I drive anywhere, I, I always park further away to get more steps in. Those are some very concrete strategies that help people to engage. Um, Marjorie from Pennsylvania says that we develop goal plans, which sometimes include a consumer's desire to increase physical activity. Our agency holds an ongoing peer support whole health group meetings to discuss the physical activity domain. We also encourage our staff to meet consumers in the community to encourage taking walks and being engaged during visits. Um, Terry from Pittsburgh says that she, that she has a coach um, that really helps her to develop an appropriate exercise regimen. Um, Catherine from Chicago tells us that it's a lifestyle. For transportation, I usually bike, I commute, um, or I walk everywhere when possible. Um, so these are some great ways that people are really out and engaging in the community. And I like that we have some examples of what providers and consumers do um, to engage in physical activity. So what about you all? Are there strategies or things that you guys use? Um, how do you, how are you physically active? Katie, who's on the other side of the room, she does yoga. She tells me about the yoga that she does all the time. I run um, and I'm trying to um, always encourage my coworkers to run with me um, so, that I, so that I don't get bored. Paige swims sometimes. <laughs> Um, and we all, you know, we've all started, we occasionally take walks during the day and we'll go out um, when it's nice out and go, go walking around the community. Biking to work, uh, Brandon is telling us that uh, biking to work is sometimes the only exercise he can fit into his schedule um, and he has to commute anyways and that's great, you have to get to work. So you could drive, you could take the subway, you could walk or you could bike. So there's a lot of ways that you can engage in physical activity. Tracy is telling us that um, she sets a goal to hike the Appalachian Trail and stay in shape by walking um, when she's not actually on the trail. Hiking in nature has relieved my depression. That's fantastic uh, because we know that being physically active um, in, the, in nature is, is hugely beneficial for um, relieving some of the symptoms of depression. Jane is telling us that one thing that has worked for for her is that she got a uh, free pedometer app installed on her iPhone, which motivates her to walk more often. And that's one of, the, one of the things that research tells us is that if you actively track um, your physical activity and you make note of it, you become more conscious of it. Um, one of the things that I would also suggest is beyond being aware of how many steps you take, think about how much um, screen time you engage in. So how much TV do 
you watch? How often are you in front of your computer or on your phone? Because those things are typically associated with sedentary activity. And so if you want to be aware of your physical activity, that's great. But also be aware of your sedentary activity. Allison is telling us that um, when commuting, instead of taking the subway, sometimes I get off early and decide to walk the rest of the way home. That's fantastic because it's a mix of some of that activity. If it's a nice day and you can stop, um, maybe a, a stop before your normal um, either bus stop or your um, subway stop and get off and then walk the rest of the way. April's telling us that her dog is great for exercise, mine as well, um, because he needs to get out and move and, and, and he's kind of sometimes my motivation to get out and to engage in some physical activity in my community. All right, one of the things that we know, and we've heard this from some of the barriers, is that a lot of times people aren't aware of the community resources that exist. Sometimes we have um, sometimes we have providers and consumers that are not always aware of free and low cost activities within the community. And we also know that a number of community organizations like YMCAs or Parks and Rec um, don't always reach out to mental health agencies to increase the awareness of those activities. So a couple of things that we've found that works um, is to really take the time to compile a, month of, a monthly list of resources about what's going on in your community. And you can use calendars within the agency. You can use calendars um, at your house to help you remind yourself. You can use social media as a way to help you stay on top of the things that are going on. Um, and so, so what that might be is if you're, if, if you like certain things, um, maybe it's, a certain park or maybe it's the the local YMCA or the library and you follow their Facebook page directly, it might give you reminders of some of the, the activities that are coming up that may promote physical activity. One of the things that we've done um, through the Temple University Collaborative uh, is that we hosted an activity fair. Uh, and what we've done is we went out in, within our community and we found organizations um, we found some of our, some of the organizations within the local community, like the YMCA, Parks and Recreation, um, Ride Indigo, which is our bike share commu our, our, our community bike share program. Um, some of the libraries that have physical activity opportunities. Uh, there's a group called Deck Conspiracy that they do pop up activities within their parks uh, or within the parks where people can come and be active together. And so what we did is we had all of these organizations come in. Um, they set up tables to provide information to people, um, and then we also had some activity sessions. But really, the point was was to bring have an opportunity and a place where we can bring consumers, providers, and these, these community organizations together to help raise awareness of the activities that were going on in their community so that you can start to help, um, you can start this dialogue between the community members, um, these community organizations, and individuals with um, mental health conditions. So, because as people are more aware of these resources, uh, then we're more likely to help make those connections. And then the other thing is really to think about physical activity as a lifestyle change. And so agency-based exercise groups are great. They increase physical activity for short periods of time, but really we want to think beyond just that 30 to 60 minutes a day, um, every day or two times a week. We want to think more about engaging in physical activity across your day and finding ways to um, really support that sustained activity because the, the concern sometimes with agency-based exercise groups is that if for some reason they go away, even though you may plan to do them till the end of time, there may be things that come up in terms of funding, um, resources, whatever it might be, sometimes those programs stop. And if individuals haven't taken these activities and integrated them, them into their day-to-day -day life, they're not going to have that lasting impact. Um, so one of the strategies is really to raise awareness of sedentary activity and ways to reduce sedentary time. Promote active transportation. This could be walking, this could be biking, 
This could be supporting people to independently use public transportation because public transportation, you, you have to walk more than if you pick, get picked up from in front of your house and dropped off where you're going. Um, set goals to get outside of your house. And this doesn't seem like it really is that physically active, but think about it. If you're at home for 24 hours a day, the physical activity that you have or that you get may or may not be that high. But if you say, okay, three times a week, I'm going to set a goal to go do something in the community. You're forcing yourself to get up, walk to wherever you're going, um, walk around within that organization or within that activity, and then come home. So even if it's not exercise based. Getting out of the house is a strategy um, that you can use uh, to get out into the community and get moving. And then also promote enjoyable activities. Um, think about hiking in the woods um, versus walking on a treadmill. So helping people to identify what those activities are that they like um, and also recognizing that it's, it's okay to say I don't like this activity. And then supporting individuals to connect to those natural supports. Um, think about people within their community that you can be active with. And so that might be really thinking through like, oh, you go to, you go to church every Sunday and maybe on the, um, during the week for a Bible study group. Or you go to um, a library group where you're consistently reading um, like a book club with the same people. Those are not inherently physically active groups, but it's likely that you have friends within those organizations. You have some of those natural supports. And so during, when you're thinking about those other places that you go consistently, are there ways that you can be more physically active with those individuals? A lot of religious organizations want to promote your physical health as well. Um, and so they may be willing to have walking groups or they may have um, other exercise groups that they run through their organization. Or, you know, as you meet people um, and become friends with them, share that your physical activity goals, um, because they may have some as well. And if you share that you're planning to walk three times a week, they may say, hey, that would be good for me too. And then all of a sudden you have a walking buddy. So really help people think through who their natural supports are and how they can connect to those individuals, either sharing their goals or engaging them in physical activity as well. So these are some resources that people um, on our survey identified that would be helpful. Um, Pam from Philadelphia said videos of line dancing. Uh, we also had, we had a number of um, people tell us that either they use um, some videos to, to increase physical activity in their home. Agencies are using some videos to help people learn different ways to be active. Um, and then some people that were asking for really short videos to help increase physical activity. Um, we also, uh, Carol, Karen from Appleton, Wisconsin said that resources that help connect physical activity with wellness instead of body shaming would be helpful for advocacy and encouraging others to take the first steps to increasing physical activity. That's great because a lot of times we think about physical activity has to be, um, you know, it has to be reducing um, weight. And that's not really what it is. It's about being healthy. It's about being the best version of you. Sometimes it means that being physically active, being physically active means that you do lose weight, but it doesn't have to be the focus. Um, Catherine from Chicago says that she uses meetup events. Um, she said meetup Chicago, they're all over the country. Um, I can sign up to do fun activities with like-minded people. I belong to several biking, hiking, and kayaking meetups. Um, it increases awareness about meetup groups, workplace activities such as walks, lunchtime dance lessons. Um, other resources that she suggested would be educational uh, materials related to the physical, emotional, and cognitive benefits of exercise. Dan from Chicago told us that support is, cru is crucial. He has a gym membership and a personal trainer that he meets with once a week, but they don't always understand how his medication affects his energy levels. Um, I also have a family member who I love dearly that is always telling me that I should work out. And that, <laughs> this just makes me a rebel. Um, so having those supports um, to help him engage in physical activity is really important. Um, Marjorie from Pennsylvania said that helpful materials also include bus passes so our consumers can attend peer support whole health meetings and community activities. 
pedometers, tracking materials like a log or journal book, incentives such as a gift certificate to purchase sneakers or movement clothes. Um, our staff could benefit from trainings and using online resources with their peers. So these are some, some strategies and resources that individuals have identified that would be helpful to either increase their own engagement in physical activity or to support others to um, increase um, engagement in physical activity. What about you guys? Are there resources, either print or online, that would help you increase physical activity? Is there anything that a mental health agency or provider could do to better support your physical activity goals? Um, providers, are there resources that would help you better support consumers? Um, are there trainings that you would that you believe would be helpful? And again, if you'd like to talk, we're happy to uh, call on you so you don't have to just hear from me. Resources, things that you all think would be helpful. These can be concrete resources like I need um, I need I need a trans pass or I need, you know, um, running shoes or, or the resources to purchase it or possibly even, you know, training. I need to, to know how to do these things. Lisa is saying that incorporating many of these ideas into our peer support specialist program, that's great because peers have been there. They've been through some of the struggles in terms of, of increasing physical activity. Um, WAM, Mary Ann, Mary Ann, I'm blanking on what WAM stands for. Can you spell that out for me? Uh, Brandon says that having a list of things that are available in the community uh, that are low cost or free would be helpful. Whole health. I don't using website um, and social media to share things that are available in the community. So you could do that on your you could do that as an organization to say these are happening in the community. Um, you can also do that on your own website or on your own Facebook page or social media so that you're able to um, tell people what you're intending to do and invite other people to do it. Um, Stephanie says that there's the go for life. Uh, free videos and exercise materials from the National Institute on Aging, um, and those are they, those are developed for individuals who are older, but they don't have to be. They work for everyone. Uh, Tracy is is suggesting to implement physical health activities in psych rehab programs. This is great um, because you can really start to encourage and provide some of those ongoing supports um, for engaging in physical activity. All right. Oh, Maria, that's cool. Uh, Maria said, oh, I just got a lot of comments all at once. Maria said that they're looking, um, we're looking towards creating a comprehensive website for individuals to plug into resources virtually. Um, WAM is Whole Health Action, Action Management <clears throat> Plan that focuses on, on the whole health. Um, recognizing, Amber says that, uh, a list, having a list of schools that have open community use of their outdoor recreation facilities, that's great because sometimes you don't know if you can be at a school um, when it's closed, even though they have these great resources there. Um, Pat Hayes suggested that to give education on techniques and safety um, and how many days a week and for how long um, individuals should be working out. So helping people be aware of what the physical activity guidelines are um, that you can find. And then there's some, Emily posted some links in there that's helpful, um, so you can find some information about, um, about those. And then Damien says that there are ways to develop baseline data uh, to see if there are better health outcomes as a re result of physical activity. Um, and I do think that that's really important because you can start to help people make those connections um, that, you know, oh, I'm being more physically active and surprisingly, I'm not as tired as I usually am because sometimes you don't think those things go together. So help people to make connections um, to being more physically, how physical activity can influence other areas of health. 
Um, Katie, Katie said that some of it, sometimes people, she teaches yoga, um, sometimes individuals are concerned about what they should wear to class. And so having some information that you don't have to look like the commercials um, to do yoga or to do physical activity. And then Marianne um, said that public health entities often have free workshops or arrange a health fair with free screenings that can help arrange, uh, raise awareness of physical activity. All right, so great, great ideas. So what's next? What are, you know, what are, you all came here today because you were interested in promoting physical activity either with the individuals that you work with or you're looking really to think about ways that you can increase and engage in, in more physical activity yourself. And that's fantastic because coming to this type of event um, or this online forum is a way that you can really make those, you know, start to say, all right, this is important. I'm going to take the steps to engage in more physical activity. I'm going to look for ways that I can support people to, to um, set physical activity goals and really sustain um, and meet those goals. So this is our commitment. You know, this is what we do well. We do research and we do training very well. So we're going to continue to conduct research and to develop interventions and resources that support consumers to increase physical activity. Um, if you're on our listserv, you likely got our message yesterday that included some resources on increasing physical activity, some strategies for providers to connect with consumers, and also some resources for consumers um, to increase physical activity independently. But the other thing that I wanted to make sure that you know of is that we want to help. Um, part of our mission as a center um, is that, that we provide training and technical assistance to consumers and organizations to help make some of these changes to increase community participation. Um, what that also means is that, that we want to help you. Um, and so sometimes people don't realize that they can come to us. Uh, we can talk you through things. We can set up either online trainings. We can provide some resources, um, depending on how far you are um, and, and what we can make happen. We may even be able to come out and do some trainings. Um, but be creative with this. Uh, are you a consumer or a person with lived experience and you want to start a walking group at your local church or your local synagogue? Uh, we can help. Reach out to us and we'll provide you some resources. We'll kind of talk through some ideas. Um, so that that's something that you feel confident that you can go and do. Are you a provider that's looking for interventions or assessment ideas? We can provide trainings. Um, are you an agency that wants to conduct larger assessments of physical activity and other health outcomes? We can help with program evaluation. These are just some small examples, but we are committed to really helping um, individuals with lived experience. We're helping um, providers really looking at ways that they can engage in their community to increase physical activity and make those lifestyle changes. Uh, Kristen will send out the listserv information to everyone um, once, the web, once the webinar is over. The other thing is, is that we will also send out this PowerPoint as well. <coughs> so some of the commitments that we saw from um, the participants within from our survey, um, an anonymous individual from Louisiana is um, thinking about going to, she's going to begin going to a support group, the Take Off Pounds Sensibly, or TOPS. Uh, went to the first meeting two weeks ago, so high five to you. Um, it's a group of like-minded individuals willing to get moving together, uh, thinking about ha having getting a trainer, a physical activity trainer, um, as they do keep my appointments with others. So that's, that's great because that's some recognition of what this individual does well. They're saying that, oh, I follow through with my appointments, so if I sign up for a trainer, I'm likely to do that. Um, Molly from the University of Minnesota says that I share research that shows how important physical activity is for mental health, specifically that it can be as effective as an antidepressant. I inquire about what kinds of activities they like um, and see how they can incorporate them into their daily lives. And so this is the way that she's both sharing some of the research that's out there because people can then make informed decisions about um, being more physically active, um, but also looking at things that they like. Um, I, I love seeing that because too often physical activity is just an assignment. Um, be exercise, go do this. And people are like, oh, 
it's not going to be any fun. It's going to be painful. I'm going to smell when it's done. Um, but it doesn't have to be because there are ways that we can be active um, that we like and we're more likely to do it. Um, Tracy is a peer specialist and she's a person in recovery and wants to create a program that takes women into the mountains hiking and backpacking. That's fantastic. Tracy, if you if you need any support or want to brainstorm that, reach out to us. Um, and we, we'd love to help you think through some of those things. So what, you, what are you going to do? What are your next steps? And, and if, you, if you're not comfortable sharing, that's fine. But take a few moments to really think through what you can do um, and what you're going to commit to to be physically active. It's getting cold. It's really cold today. I talked to my friend in Chicago yesterday. It was like 6. Um, so I know this is a hard time to really think about being active, but make a commitment. You know, what can you do? Who can you share your physical activity goals with? Providers, what are your next steps to supporting physical activity? Are there trainings that you need? Um, are there, you know, is it that you want to set up a meeting with your agency administrators and say, hey, we really need to be thinking about supporting physical activity because that may be the first step to engaging and starting that conversation. So what's your commitment? Either feel free to share verbally, tweet us at TU Collab, um, or type it in the comment box. We're going to jump forward. Sorry about that. Great. Maria is um, looking to partner with local rec centers to reach more people. That's fantastic. I had a, a phone conversation with um, a group out of North Carolina, and they were a parks and rec agency, and they had developed some programs, and they were trying to encourage engagement from um, uh, consumers who were being discharged from an inpatient facility. And they were really struggling because they had this commitment and people were like, oh, yes, I want to do it. And then they would go home and then they would never see them again. And so really having those dialogues continuing and trying to think through strategies, why is this not working? What do we need to do? Is it that we need to then connect with the community mental health center or are there ways that we can follow up with individuals directly um, so that they have those supports to continue to engage? Um, so thinking about those community recreation resources, because the thing is, is that often as mental health providers, sometimes we don't think about those community resources, but as community um, providers or community organizations, sometimes we forget that there's a group of individuals that we may not be reaching. Um, and so opening the dialogue as a mental health agency or as a consumer with some of those outside organizations, like WISE, like parks, like libraries, can be a great way to get that dialogue going and really see where it goes from there. The other thing, um, when we send out um, this presentation, we will also send you a brief survey. And within that survey, uh, we'll include information or the opportunity for you guys to uh, ask uh, questions or tell us that there are resources or supports that we can provide to you directly. Um, you know, please be creative with that. We're always willing to sort of figure out what that might look like. Um, And then we've got some great resources. Be sure to check out the chat box on the side because people are sharing some great resources and ideas there. I've been trying to read them as we go along, um, but I'm sure that I've missed some um, throughout. Oops, I keep doing the wrong thing. Again, um, you guys made a commitment there. You know, we had, We've got 38 folks on the line. Um, at one point in time, I think we had 45. Um, so you guys have made a commitment. You showed up today, and that's fantastic. So take a moment to to recognize that you're you're making a commitment to physical activity. Um, but let us know how we can help. Um, we we do want to continue this dialogue, uh, and we'll reach out to you. Um, 
do check out our resources. We think they're fantastic. Um, but we also, you know, think that there they are ways that there are resources that people may not be aware of that can help give you the tools um, and the ideas to help either support physical activity goals or to engage in physical activity yourself. Um, but we also would like feedback if, the, if you're looking through those resources and you find that there's something that is missing or that you don't understand, let us know. We can either look at some of our research and see how we can develop other resources, or um, we can help walk you through how it might be tailored to your organization specifically. Amber suggested that um, creating a bridge program between a, or she's going to make a commitment to create a bridge program between the rehab hospital and the YMCA to give patients the opportunity to increase physical activity once they're back in the community, which is great um, because the Y is, is um, always there um, and in so many different communities as well. Um, Maria suggested that way down the pipeline, um, they're looking to explore um, opportunities um, to connect with a diabetes prevention program. Um, and it sounds like there's some folks that are connecting um, through the through our chat box as well, and that's fantastic, you know, the, because we can be not only as the collaborative, but the people who, who are in the chat box and on the line can certainly be um, your uh, supports and, and resources as well. So connect with each other. Um, that is another way that you can rely on other providers and consumers to really brainstorm ideas of physical activity. Okay, that's really all I have today. I want to thank you all for participating um, and throwing out some such great ideas. Uh, we will be sending out information. Um, it looks like there may be some folks who would be interested in starting a um, maybe an ongoing dialogue around physical activity and really supporting physical activity for people with mental health conditions. So in that survey, um, we'll ask if you're willing to be added to a list that would target that so that we can all sort of continue having this conversation. Um, Uh, Pat is suggesting that research suggests three days is, is an, okay, four to six days um, exercise is um, much better. In fact, having exercise and physical activity throughout all of your days is probably what's going to be most beneficial um, because there are, there are ways to, you can increase physical activity and meet the physical activity guidelines, but still have a predominance of sedentary activity. So one of the things that we really emphasize is trying to really try to incorporate physical activity into all of your days. It doesn't mean that you have to go running every day, but it does mean that you're trying to be active in some way throughout throughout every day. Um, and you're right, you're right, uh, Pat, per his persistence is definitely something um, that is important. So with that, we'll let, um, <laughs> He's also commenting that there's facts, lies, and statistics. Yeah, we know that too. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So we will follow up with you shortly. I'm going to leave the line open um, so that you guys can continue to engage on the chat box if you'd like. Um, and then we'll be signing up, and you will hear from us uh, shortly. And have a wonderful holiday season. And remember to encourage yourself and everyone else to be active. Thanks for joining us.